opposition as Christians. What we would say is that without God and the Bible and biblical Christianity, you cannot know anything rightly. You cannot know anything for certain. You cannot know anything according to your worldview. And you know what? Night after night, week after week, we come out here and we talk to atheists, agnostics, skeptics, people that believe contrary to what the Bible teaches, Muslims, Hindus, and people that want to live a life that's in total opposition to the Bible, homosexuality, fornication, all of these sins are there to remind us that we have to give an account before our Creator who is holy. And God is holy and righteous, and the Bible says He will judge every single person according to their deeds. Think about that. I don't know about you, but I don't, we, I don't want to be judged according to my deeds. If I'm judged according to my deeds, meaning my righteousness, then on that day I'll have no hope. But if God judges me according to the righteous life of Jesus Christ, then I do have hope. If Jesus Christ is my advocate, if Jesus is my substitute, if Jesus stands in my place as my substitute, as the one who obeyed God's law perfectly, you see, because no one has obeyed God's laws perfectly. You may think that God's laws are irrelevant today. They're not. Ask yourself the simple questions. Have you ever lied? Have you ever stole? Have you ever, have you ever used God's name in vain? Jesus even intensified the law of God by saying, if you've even looked with lust, you have in essence violated the law against adultery. If you've ever hated anybody with unjust anger in your heart, you've committed murder in your heart. So what was Jesus trying to say? Jesus was trying to say that the, the human condition is so bad that when we look at the heart of man, all we find is what it says in the Gospels. You'll find murders and thieves and thefts and adulteries and lying. You see, because man's condition is inherently sinful. It is fallen. We have a problem that we cannot fix. You cannot remedy your condition by your own religious activity. You can't go to a church to become righteous. You can't pray to become righteous. You cannot read your Bible and that will make you more righteous. The only thing that will make a person righteous in the sight of God very important. That's why, you know, it's good. I got everybody's attention. The only thing that will make a person righteous in the sight of God is the perfect life and death of Jesus Christ. And it is the duty of man to believe in Him, to cast aside all self-reliance. What are you trusting in tonight? What is your hope? What are you hoping in? Your possessions, your money, your family, your, your country? I mean, think about it. Let's just use a very, very contemporary analogy right now. Let's just say that we all got an emergency text message on our phones that says we are now at war with Korea and they have launched nuclear weapons and they're headed our way. Where's your hope? And it doesn't have to be a nuclear bomb headed your way. Where's your hope? When you get the phone call and the doctor gives you the news you never, ever, ever wanted to hear, that's something that you can't even see on the level of a microscopic ce uh, uh, a cell is going to so weaken your immune system and your body and cancer is going to spread through your system and you're going to die. Where's your hope? Where's your foundation? Jesus spoke about having one of two foundations in this world. Either you will build your life on the foundation of Jesus' words, in other words, on the gospel and the biblical worldview, or you will build your foundation on a faulty foundation, on sand. And when the fierce storm of God's judgment comes in, only the person who built their life on the foundation of Jesus Christ will stand on that day. But if you build your foundation on anything else, anything else, you say, oh, my parents are Christian, I'll be okay, don't worry about it. 
He said, oh, I was raised Christian. Don't worry about it. I'm going to be okay on Judgment Day or when I die. Because most people think, well, that's, you know, Judgment Day and that's fear-mongering. Well, don't forget, you are, according to the Bible, your life is a vapor. You're here today, you're gone tomorrow. And so you have to, you have to be honest with your frailty, your humanity. You have to be honest with the fact that you are not going to live forever. You're going to see God one day. You're going to stand before the throne of God one day. And you're going to give an answer for everything that you've ever done, everything that you've ever said, every motive of your heart that you ever had. The Bible says you will have to give an account on the day of judgment. Are you ready for that? day and how awesome that day is going to be. The Bible says it is a terrifying thing to, to fall into the hands of the living God. Are you ready for that? It is a terrifying thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Unless, of course, you are safe in the everlasting arms of Jesus Christ. Unless you are safe in Him. Unless you are hidden in Him then the day of judgment will be a, a, a day of terror. The Bible says God is a consuming fire. The Bible says we cannot contend with the Almighty. Of other people, the Bible says 
you live darkness rather than light. That shows you your depravity. That left to yourself, left to yourself, you will pursue darkness. And that's exactly what that's exactly what God wants to change in your heart. Say that again. Left to yourself, you will pursue darkness, not the light. Okay. So you need the light. Okay. You, you need a heart change. Is that what you believe? That's what I believe because that's what the Bible says. But you're wrong. I believe what the Bible says because apart from the Bible, oh, you couldn't know anything at all. At least not rightly. I love, I love my people. I don't know what they're talking about, dude. But I'm talking about the very simple message of the gospel that says that we're all sinners and we need God to rescue us and redeem us and save us from our own oh, from our sin I, and ultimately I from know. his wrath and I his judgment and hell what are you talking about hell yes sir the bible teaches heaven it teaches hell. hell the bible says that there is a heaven to gain and a hell to shun it teaches that there is either everlasting joy in the presence of almighty god or there's a place called hell which is everlasting torment away from the presence of god is that where listen folks is that where you're going to die, listen folks a life lived and a death died is that where you're going and an eternity entered is it's that an where you're going? awesome thing it's an awesome is thing it is a serious thing. Hey, I got a question. Is that where you're going? I answer questions on the microphone. If you want to use the microphone, then we can have a rational discussion. Is that where you're going? Hell? Christians have the hope of heaven. The only reason why we have the hope of heaven is not because of anything that we have done, but it's because of what Jesus did on our behalf on the cross. That's the gospel. The gospel is... All these Christians used to be sin-loving, God-hating rebels, and Jesus Christ died for them, saved them, and changed them so that they became lovers of God instead of 